LAM stands for a long word, which is lymph angiomyomatosis. And uh, LAM is a rare disease that affects women. It causes sometimes extensive cystic destruction of the lungs, almost like very severe emphysema, but in young women who have often never smoked. And we have a wonderful center here at the Brigham that supports basic research, translational research, and clinical research to improve the lives of women who have LAM. In fact, I think we have one of the largest centers for LAM in the United States and in the world. In all of human disease, there are almost no diseases, perhaps no diseases, that have as strong a gender predisposition as LAM, except, of course, for diseases that are of the genital organs, like prostate cancer or ovarian cancer. So how could this be? How could LAM have such a strong gender predisposition when it's a lung disease? And of course, both men and women have lungs. And remarkably, we don't really know the answer to that question. Um, we do know that LAM cells have the express the estrogen receptor, just like breast cancer cells. And we strongly suspect that estrogen plays a role in promoting the growth and survival of these cells. But we don't know for sure where they come from. We don't think they start in the lung. We think they spread to the lung from somewhere else in the body. And we don't actually know where they begin. And we don't really know why, they, why it affects only women. We consider LAM to be an example of a benign metastatic disease. So I'm an oncologist, and in oncology we make a clear distinction between benign tumors that do not metastasize and malignant tumors that do metastasize. And of course, the vast majority of people who die from cancer die because the cancer has metastasized. So in between these two very clear definitions, benign and malignant, is LAM, in which the cells under the microscope look benign. They look quite innocent, actually, under the microscope. And yet we know from genetic studies that they metastasize to the lungs. So LAM is an example of a disease where cells that look benign under the microscope have the potential to metastasize in a woman. And it really challenges our understanding of what, what is a benign tumor and what is a malignant tumor. And ideally, we hope that by studying LAM, we might understand more about the fundamental, fundamental mechanisms that allow a cell to metastasize. So we know that there are at least several thousand women with LAM living in the United States. But we think that they may be just the tip of the iceberg because LAM is very difficult to diagnose. A very typical presentation of LAM is a young woman, maybe in her late 20s or early 30s, often becoming more symptomatic soon after a pregnancy. And the symptoms are sometimes vague. So they include shortness of breath, for example, when climbing stairs, fatigue, um, a lack of energy, Sometimes the lung can actually collapse, which is a very dramatic um, symptom of LAM, but often the symptoms are quite vague. So a woman who has LAM may first be told she has asthma or told that she is simply tired because she has young children and needs to get more exercise. Eventually, someone may do a chest X-ray, but the chest X-ray may look completely normal. And then sometimes, uh, this same woman will have a kidney tumor, which can occur in LAM, and that may be diagnosed through an abdominal CT scan. Or someone may eventually have a chest CT scan. And on a chest CT scan, we can see the characteristic lung destruction of LAM. So in the lungs of a woman with LAM on chest CT scan, we can see dozens, sometimes hundreds, of holes that should not be there. So places where the lacy, beautiful network of the lung, which allows oxygen to move from the air when you take a breath into your bloodstream, has been destroyed in LAM. And that leads to progressive shortness of breath and sometimes the need for therapy or even lung transplantation, and women do die of LAM. 
So the treatment for lamb that we have today is stopping the further progression of lamb, but women need to continue the drug indefinitely. So as when the drug is discontinued, the progression of lamb resumes. What we think is happening with treatments right now for lamb is that we are blocking further growth of the cells, but the cells are still there, they're still alive. And when we stop the drug, the cells begin to grow again and to destroy the lung again. Ideally, our goal is to find treatments that would cause the lamb cells to go away and not come back after we stop the treatment, providing a, not a cure exactly, but a, a treatment that would really have lasting benefit in a woman who has lamb. Because often we're treating lamb in someone who might be in her 20s or 30s, and to use a drug that has side effects for many, many years is obviously not ideal. We really want to tackle this disease and make those cells go away. One of the amazing strengths of the Brigham community that we have many investigators here who are involved at all different levels in this process from individuals whose primary mission is outstanding care of women who have lamb to individuals whose primary mission is in the laboratory to understanding what's causing the disease and how we can identify better treatments.